Do you ever get groceries on your bike? Hey everyone, Tom again here for Shifter, a channel all about urban cycling and bike commuting. There's, there's a weird thing happening as our cities become more bike friendly. There's kind of this reverse phenomenon happening. I think at one point in time when people used bikes for transportation, those who really got into cycling got into sports. They got into bike racing and that kind of thing. But these days it's the opposite. People start with sports in mind. They buy a mountain bike or a road bike and athletics or sports is the first introduction to cycling. But as cities get more bike friendly, I think what we're seeing is a lot of people who love cycling sort of come backwards into transportation or utility cycling. They love doing it and then they realize that you can do it for transportation. And it seems like these days there's more and more people giving a second look to the bike as a form of transportation because of COVID-19. I think the coronavirus has a lot of people rethinking a lot of things, including how we get around our cities. Maybe they don't want to take public transit. Maybe they see the streets are a bit quieter, so it's safer to ride. Maybe they realize being outside with a bit of exercise and some fresh air is good for us, even in these times when we're self-isolating. Lord knows it's better than taking a car. Gross, a car? So I want to offer some tips today to all of you mountain bikers and road cyclists and Sunday riders who've never actually thought about the bike as a form of transportation. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go on an errand. I'm going to run to the grocery store and pick up a loaf of bread and offer some tips about how to use your bike on the way. All right, let's go. Okay, first tip is an easy one and that is make your bike accessible. If you want to use it every day for transportation cycling, make it easy to get at. Don't like hang it in your basement or like string it up to the from the rafters of the garage. You're going to want to get on and off all the time, so make it easy on yourself and make the bike accessible. Number two is don't change your clothes. I know most of you when you're thinking about a, a bike ride, the first thing you do is go put on your athletic wear. I mean, even if you're not wearing padded shorts, you're still putting on yoga pants or a polyester shirt or something athletic. And I'm here to say, don't do it, don't bother. Utility cycling is about just getting out and going. You don't need any special gear. So if you're going to the grocery store, unless you normally wear special clothes for grocery shopping, go ahead. But otherwise, you don't need it. Just wear what you're wearing. And that goes doubly for a specific part of clothing. Your shoes. I know a lot of people have clip-in shoes and they love them and clip-in shoes are amazing if you're going on an athletic ride but you don't need them when you're riding around the city. Uh, get flat pedals, don't change your shoes, just wear whatever you've got on. You just need to get up and go. Next tip is your bike. Now, I'm not saying you need to go out and buy a new bike, but transportation cycling is way easier if you have a practical bike. You want a sturdy, practical bike that can take a little bit of a beating. Not one of those bikes that will go out of whack every time you uh, lean it over on the derailleur. And perhaps most importantly, you don't want a bike that you're going to worry about leaving somewhere. Uh, utility cycling is about taking your bike wherever you need to go, locking it up outside. So if you're riding your $10,000 triathlon bike to the grocery store, and every second you're in there shopping for groceries, you're worried that your bike's gonna get stolen, then that's probably not the best bike. Speaking of riding in the city, you're gonna need one of these, a bike lock. If you're leaving your bike all over the city, you know the risk of it being stolen is going to be greater. So don't cheap out on your lock. I know it's tempting to say, what, this lock costs three quarters of the price of my bike. It doesn't matter, buy a good lock. It's worth it. You're gonna be thankful that you did. If you're not worrying about your bike being stolen, that peace of mind is worth something as well. And here's another little tip. This uh, kind of lock, it's not the most secure, but it's pretty good. And what I like about it is that it's always on my bike. It just attaches to the frame, so it's always there. I never have to remember to bring it with me. The next tip, carrying capacity. You're gonna need some carrying capacity. So, basket on the back, basket on the front, maybe some bags, some panniers, anything like that that you can haul stuff with. Because if you're gonna use your bike for errands and utility purposes, you're gonna need to carry stuff. It's amazing to me how many groceries I can pack into a basket like this. I've got the uh, handyman's friend there, the bungee cord to make it a little bit better. So make sure your bike has some carrying capacity. Okay, here's another tip that seems like a no-brainer but is often forgotten. Slow down. Riding your bike for transportation is not a race. You don't wanna arrive all sweaty, no one's clocking you. You just need to get there safely and comfortably. This can be tough for some people, but just slow down. I might be my cousin, but I 
as I was filming this, I was just happened to ride behind three women who totally illustrated the point I'm trying to make. Two of them were dressed for athletics. One was dressed for life. Uh, and you can see they're all out on their bikes, all enjoying it, I'm sure, but you can see how easy, how much easier it would be just to get on and off your bike and go to the pub or go to the grocery store if you're just wearing your normal clothes and you've got a practical bike compared to those who were all geared up in their athletic wear. But I My last tip is one I'm gonna get all the angry comments about, but here is something to consider, and that's get over your helmet fundamentalism. You may live in one of those misguided places where a helmet law is in place, in which case this doesn't apply to you, but if you don't, I would say think closely about your helmet. I don't want to get into the debate about helmets right now. In fact, I've written sort of my opinion on this, and I'll put a, I'll put a link to my blog down below. All I'm saying is if a helmet discourages you from riding, then maybe think about not wearing one. As long as you're in a safe position, if you live in a place with safe bike infrastructure, if you, f if you feel like there's low risk, give it a thought. For me, when I ride a mountain bike or a road bike, I've definitely got my helmet on. When I'm going on quiet streets with separated bike lanes to the grocery store, I don't always wear one. There's not a lot of nuance in this debate, but I think there should be. Anyway, give it some thought. Okay, we made it. The grocery store is just across the street there. The whole point here is just to make your bike life a little bit easier. If you already love cycling for recreation or athletic reasons, you're gonna love it for transportation even more. It's just getting more bike in your life is always good. And our cities are getting more and more bike friendly all the time. We've got a long ways to go before we're truly bike friendly, but it's a start. And this is a great opportunity these days when car traffic is a bit slower to get out there and give it a try, make it a habit, and maybe you'll come to love it as much as so many of us have already. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Time. But I